So guys, from time to time, I'd like to loiter on people's GitHub repos, looking for issues and bugs, specifically to see if there is an interesting gem, uh, lessons that we can learn from those issues of homeless bugs. And boy, I have an interesting one for me. I have a gem for you guys today. I found an Instripe node. I have no idea how I stumbled upon this link. It's it's usually from a GitHub to another GitHub from linking from an issue or Twitter. And I eventually I found, but let's read through this. Let's read through the problem. It, it's a, it's, it involves AWS Lambda, which is their serverless offering and Stripe node client. You know, if you don't know, Stripe is the uh, API that allows you to do payments. And it's a very interesting bug. Amazon replied, and we're gonna do we're gonna read the reply now to that. But let's read through the bug. Let's see what's the bug exactly, and then go through the Amazon, and then I'm gonna go through some slides that I did to explain with it because it's it's very interesting. It's not it's not straightforward. Let's go ahead. So the the bug title is intermittent error. <laughs> Those are the best, isn't it? <laughs> Write ePipe when running Stripe client in AWS Lambda, entered by Hisham. We're using Stripe node client 8.771.0 on AWS Lambda running node 12.x. A Stripe customers.list call is called first thing when the Lambda execute. 33% of the time, we get this error on that call. It consistently happens, so does not seem to be transient. I did read issue 650 and setting the max network retries in Stripe to two seems to resolve the issue. However, it seems that just masked the issue. Boy, this is badass. Hisham is a badass. Guys, Hisham, you're a badass. Thank you for being the ideal engineer and not just hacking shits through and actually and try to understand what's going on. That's what every engineer should do. You don't just copy and paste stuff. You don't just change a vari variables. Oh, it seems to be working, I guess it's fine. No, we need to understand what's going on. So it looks like the socket's being closed on itself and a retry solves it. Obviously a retry solves everything, but do you really, n this is the most fragile thing you need to do, right? If you change something and it works and you don't know how, how, how it works, that is, you have to be scared, okay? And, uh, and obviously he shows the errors and stuff. So Hisham goes through issues, there is a, brings in some more people and, and he finally receives uh, a reply from Amazon. Let's read Amazon reply. Starting with the error ePipe, error zero is generally caused when the data is piped into closed stream. That means because you're working on TCP connections, more normally guys, TCP connections, that's me speaking now, no, I'm not coding. Um, TCP connections is stateful, are stateful, right? So there is a state, and there is the and state has to be maintained, right? When you start the state, it goes into established, and then when you close it, it goes into Fenway one and Fenway two, and then close and goes into different states. So if if these states are out of sync and you it's closed technically, and you try to send something, you're gonna get an error from the Linux kernel, or um, if your app has a state that doesn't match the kernel, right? So that's what you get. That's what happens. So sometimes it looks like you have a process with a closed stream, do you have to, you, but your app thinks it's open. That's the worst thing in the stateful apps that you can get, right? Essentially you're out of sync. Ah, let me get in, okay. In this case, Node.js Lambda function, the error might cause when the Node.js event loop did not clean up closed TCP connections from the HTTP connection pool, and then the Node.js runtime attempt to use the closed TCP connection. All right, that's one scenario. But look at this. Now they explain how Lambda works, and I was really intrigued by this. It's very interesting, because Lambda, if you don't know, guys, uh, before we go into this, Lambda is their serverless offering. It's a serverless concept where you make a request to some sort of a reverse proxy or a gateway, their Lambda AWS, and then based on your request, they spin up a container, shove your code into that container, 
and that takes time. That's called the cold start. Once that starts, you, they run your code and then they destroy that container and return it. There is one case where they reuse the container if you're making a lot of requests in a very quick delay, right? In a very, very small delay. They, they, they reuse the container and that's when the bug happens. Let's read through this. AWS Lambda function runs in an isolated container and usually each invoke starts a new Lambda function execution in a new container. So a brand new container. I mean, we always say that serverless is stateless, that as a result, you have to start in a brand new container. So you have absolutely no side effect. However, if the delay between two requests is very small, then the container used by the previous invoke might be used later might be reused to cater to a later request as well. This is known as container reuse. And they have a very beautiful article, I'm gonna reference it below, that they discuss container reuse. They, they did a good job in discussing stuff, Amazon. While finishing execution, Lambda does not consider the state of active processes in the background, other than the handler function. So the function that actually executes your, your code which is basically your main Node.js thread, right? If you start other processes, you fork other processes, Lambda is not responsible for those. It says, hey, as long as I execute this code, this is my main function handler, I'm gonna execute it. When it's done, I'm gonna kill my container. I'm gonna stop it if, if in case of a release. So what does it do with the active processes? Thus, when the execution is finished, the active processes turn into a frozen state. They froze it. Man, bring those meat from Costco and put it in the freezer. Look at that stuff. When the next request is processed by the container, is if it happened to have a reuse, those frozen processes are just started back again in their frozen state. So if you had a TCP socket in one of those frozen processes in a state of established, right? And then all of a sudden Lambda decided to freeze your process. So the server that you have been connected to in the background decides like, hey, where is this guy? Where is it again? Where did you go? And decided, so you know what, I'm gonna close it. And obviously he's gonna do a fin and get a fin and then gonna retry the fins and obviously he's gonna give up at the end of the day based on the keep alive uh, and the, some timeouts and other stuff on the server side. So the server actually physically closes the connection. That's it, it's done. So now if any frozen process has dependencies of piping and streaming, the process fails to continue execution as it does not find the pipeline connection stream it used in the previous request. It's done, that's it, it is completely gone. You're a completely new container. So that state is not matching anymore. So let's go through the slides that I did, guys. Um, all right, guys, you don't need to see my face. So let's go ahead. So here's a Lambda AWS cloud. For example, I am a client, I make a request. What happens? The first request that you make, uh, AWS Lambda will spin up a new, brand new container. It's called container X. And then based on the code that you have configured for your Lambda function, it will load the Node.js, it will load the Python, it will load the Ruby, whatever your code was, that specific runtime, and then delegate the function to your main process. Essentially, this is, I, I drew it as a thread, and it's thread because it's in use right now. Okay, that's called the handler function, main process. So once this is done, the handler function is released and the container remains at this stage, yet we're done with it, right? And then we're gonna return the results back, whatever that JSON response, that XML response, back to the Lambda, and then Lambda returns it back to the client. Very simple stuff, okay? And after a while, if nobody made a request in X amount of milliseconds or seconds, I don't know what's the time is, Amazon kills that container and just released it back, okay? That's how serverless in a nutshell works. But let's talk about what exactly happened with Stripe and Lambda. Let's, talk, let's actually go into details here, okay? So what happened here, a new request was made, all right? And then this is the handler function. A container was spun up, but Node.js Stripe code actually spun up background processes that itself 
uh, starts its own connections, right? So these are the background processes, and all of them are in use. However, what happened here is the main process finished. That's the fun. That's the lambda. That's what lambda watches for. It was finished, but those guys were still running, and as a result. What did Lambda do? It froze those two background processes. It kept the container running. And then the next request that happened so fast happened to hit the same container. That's called container reuse. So we reused the same container. And as a result, we started reusing the same main thread. But guess what? We unfroze that connection. They started to start up. And all of a sudden, hey, what is it? It's like they, they woke up after hibernating, right? And they're like, oh, what is that? What? The currency has changed? What's going on? Oh, who's president right now? All, all these weird things, right? All of a sudden, boom. That's it. It's crashing. So obviously you're going to get an error. You try to do your own thing because the process thinks that the, the TCP connection is alive, which is not true, and it will try to do its own thing, gets that e-pipe error, gets back an error, and then goes back, right? So that's, that's exactly what happened. All right, <laughs> back to my face. Hello. And let's see. So that's, that's what happened, guys. So that makes sense that the, the suggestion that Hisham has read, which is Max... Increasing the max retries to two will solve it because the next request that you make is going to spin up a new container and that new container is going to have brand new background processes which will not have that problem. Even if you did hit the same container, you'll be lucky because that connection will just be, will be closed and then the logic in node stripe will just, oh, close, all right, let me open it again. That's what we'll do. It will, it will fix it. But to me, that's a hack. And that's what Hisham also agreed with. So what did, uh, what did Amazon suggest? Let's see. Let's see what did Amazon suggest. What did Amazon suggest? To avoid these errors, the following is suggested. Revisit the function code and ensure that processes dependent on the connection stream are finished before Lambda execute execution fun uh, function fin finishes. 100% this is the right way, in my opinion. Absolutely, 100%, 1000%, this is the right solution. So the background processes, wait for that dang thing to finish before the main function. The main function should coordinate those things, right? And as a result, it should not finish before them, right? And that's what apparently has happened, right? Use the retry, which will create new connection stream for the new request. That works... And I, from what I read, from all the issues that I started to read, a lot of people are, even Amazon themselves, based on Hisham's comments, they are using the same solution. They're just like, hey, and instead, what they did, they will not fail, and instead, they, will, they, will, they don't cause the e-pipe error to return back to the user. No. If that error happened, they will treat it as a closed connection and it will automatically reopen that connection which, which sounds to me like okay that's a fine solution okay all right guys that's it for me today very quick video and a very interesting find what do you think about this thing do you think it's a hack do you think it's the right solution because hey Hussein sometimes uh, this stuff can happen but you have to kind of capture it and resume and and instead of failing, just reconnect and try again. As long as we know what's happening, I'm okay with that. Not with the max retry equal two, but with essentially reconnecting when the pipe is closed, having the solution in Node.js itself, right? Or in Stripe, let's say, and instead of having to retry every time there is a failure, because sometimes it's a real failure, and now you're doubling the number of requests, right? Because if it's, if it's an actual failure, if you increase the retry to two, every time you failed truly, that is unrecoverable, you're gonna attempt a retry. And that just doubles the amount of work that you have to do on your client. How much work at the server side? I don't know. I'll leave the comments back to you guys in the comments. What do you think about this? I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, yo.